Hi everybody, it's Karen Goodrich again. Today I'm going to do a double dirty pour landscape. This is an idea I came up with a while back when I was trying to solve the problem of putting two colors side by side that don't really mix. If you've ever mixed colors, you know that if you mix green and red, it comes up with mud. So I came up with the idea of having two separate pours lay them side by side and it actually creates a very nice horizon line which is why I call it a landscape. So before I start I want to talk about the board I'm painting on. This is a scrap piece of wood. It's 3 8 It's about 18 inches by 26 and I instead of using artist gesso I used regular house paint primer. So if you have any of this laying around from your last, the last time you painted your wall, you might try using this. I think it works really good on a, on a board. Not so sure if it works good on a canvas because it's not meant to be flexible. But I put several coats on. Don't shortchange yourself on the gesso or the primer because you don't want anything leaching through your painting in the future if you come up with a really great painting. So I have it sitting on some yogurt cups nice solid surface. I'm going to be tilting in all directions and this is my dirty pour. I have different blues in here. I stayed all with blue plus some white and here I have different yellows. Again I stayed with different shades of yellow, some cooler yellows, warmer yellows and there's also some white in here because the white seems to add some interest and it doesn't doesn't harm any of the colors. So since this is a long horizontal, I'm going to initially stand on the end here and I'm going to start pouring at one end and then bring it towards me and we're going to pour them both at once, right in the center. So it looks like that's going to be plenty of paint. Those were two 16 ounce cups, by the way. So I'm going to go kind of uh, east and west here and get some coverage. The hardest thing to do is to get these corners covered. So I'm going to tilt and try and get these corners covered. Go, going clear to the edge. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. There's no real reason to wait here. So now I've got my blue coverage. Now I'm going to tilt it back. In fact, I'll turn it so you can see it a little better. No reason not to. I was originally thinking that the blue was going to dominate, but it's always a surprise when you pour. And I think this yellow may end up being the dominant color. And by dominant, I mean that the yellow is going to take up more space than the blue. But the subject to change, I'm just watching it. The yellow is showing some interesting variations here. So now I've got coverage and I just need to decide what to do. I think I'm going to push the blue, see what happens here. I don't know, I'm kind of liking that. I'm kind of liking the yellow, which I wasn't expecting. So I'm going to tilt it back towards the blue and I'm going to let a little more blue runoff. My whole thinking is here is not to have the horizon line exactly in the middle because that's a less interesting composition. So anything but the middle works for me. And 
and it makes some nice variations, things that you can't think of yourself. It does it on its own. But you can also tilt this way a little bit and see if you can get some movement this way. It's already slowing down, so the movements are going to be minimal. But I'm kind of liking that. I like the way this ran off a little bit more. There's some dark here. Nice light wispy streaks over here. The yellow is interesting. Different yellows. It's amazing um, how much variation you can get by using the same colors, just a different, maybe different brands, different, like for example, there's an Indian yellow in here. There's a Azo yellow medium in here. I'm using Nova paint, it's my favorite paint, but don't be afraid to use an inexpensive craft paint. Use what you have. I'm gonna do one final push here to let this yellow push into the blue a little bit more, just to keep this horizon line away from the center. And really that's about it. I've had people ask me to see dried paintings and just so you know you can go to my Etsy store and see some of the dried paintings. I put pretty much all my demos in my Etsy store. It's Karen dot etsy dot com karen with a c and you can also find me on instagram karen goodrich you can see examples of the paintings after they're dry because they do change a little bit although this one i don't expect a lot of change the reason i don't get a lot of change is because i use a lot of pouring medium and very little water i find if you use a lot of acrylic paint and thin it with only water, it's going to change more. This pouring medium, which in my case I use Novaplex number 233, I use that as a pouring medium. It Once you once you get your pour down and you tilt it, and it's just been a couple minutes now, this is pretty much going to stay. The only thing I might do here before we go is try my torch. I do have a couple of drops of silicone in the yellow, maybe in the white as well, I don't remember now, and I'm going to torch this just to see if something will come up, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it or worry about it either way. with just a brief torching I notice it pops some bubbles maybe some silicone is coming up here there's some little white dots here that may get bigger as this thing settles in but I'm gonna call that good and anyway that is my double dirty landscape pour I hope you enjoyed it I hope it gives you some ideas try any color combinations you want two cups same time have fun with it, and we'll see you next time. Okay, this painting has been sitting here for about 15 minutes now, and I wanted to point some things out. This is my favorite part right here, where this darker blue mixed and made kind of lacy patterns with the white and the lighter blue. I also like the way it, the two colors met, and it turned green. The blue met the yellow and left, left a little bit of a green overlay. And then as you go further down the board, it starts to get a little more opaque blue. And then down here, more white is showing up. There's a few cells, which is fine. I, I'm a little surprised that where the blue met the yellow down here at this far end, that it didn't integrate more. It's um, Sometimes it does a little more than others. This kept a pretty hard line. And then if you go over here to the yellow, I really like what happened here these different shades of yellow streaking together. Very interesting. And then down here is really all the white that showed in the yellow ended up down here. I also have some nice drips 
that I'm going to utilize with paper. And if you want to check out my other vid video called Table Drip Dip, I can show you how to preserve some of the beauty here with watercolor paper. And, you know, I use the term landscape loosely. It, it, this, to me, is an abstract, abstract landscape because it has what I call a horizon line. And the main thing I want to do when creating a composition is to keep that horizon line somewhere other than the middle. So in this case, the yellow dominated, the blue ended up getting less yardage, but that's okay. I really like the way this came out. So here we go.